Welcome to part two of this character creation for beginners blender tutorial series where we're creating this cartoon stylized penguin character. So this is where we left off in part one. So we had modeled most of the penguin, but he needs a face. So in this part, we're going to be modeling like the beak of the penguin. And then we're also going to be modeling the eyes and the eyebrows. And as I mentioned in part one, if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, then you can purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store and you also get access to the tutorial files on my Patreon page. And checking out my Gumroad and Patreon are really great ways to help support me and this channel. And then just one more thing before we get started, I wanted to thank this video's sponsor, Blender Grid. Blender Grid is an easy to use render firm specifically designed for Blender. I've used the service and I highly recommend it. Upload your Blender file or a zip file with the blend file and textures. You can change the render settings on the website before rendering. Blender Grid will let you know the cost before you start the render. You can even choose when you want the render to finish if you're on a tight deadline. While it renders, you can check the rendered frames to make sure everything is rendering properly. Once it finishes, just download the files and compile the frames in a video editor. Use the link in the description to get $20 of render credit on your first render. All right, so we're gonna start off by modeling the penguin's eyes. So I'm gonna press Shift C and Shift C is going to center the 3D cursor into the center there of our 3D scene. So I'm now gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna go here down here to mesh and I'm going to add a UV sphere. Now again, if you click right here, right above me on the add UV sphere settings, we can change the topology. So I'm going to turn the segments to 16 and then I'm going to turn the rings to 8 because we don't need it to be that high topology and then I can just close that. So that is a much better topology for what we're doing. So I'm going to press G to grab and I'm going to bring this up on the Z axis and then I'm going to tab to go into edit mode and then I'm going to press S and we're going to scale that down and then I can press G to grab and let's bring this over on the Y axis just like that and then I can press G to grab bring that over and I'm just going to kind of bring it over to the side and then I'll scale it down and then I want to add a mirror modifier so it mirrors it over to the other side so over here on the modifier properties let's click on add modifier and we are going to add the mirror modifier so now it mirrors it over to the other side and then just make sure you turn on the x-axis so it mirrors it over on the x-axis all right now I also want to rotate this over so I'm going to press R to rotate and then I'm going to hit the X button to rotate it over on the x-axis and I want to rotate it exactly over by 90 degrees so I can type in 90 and then enter and you can see right there it says rotation 90 right up there in the corner of my screen so I can hit enter and that's going to rotate it over by exactly 90 degrees. I'm now going to press one on the numpad and that is going to take me to front view and then I'm going to hold down the Z button move over to a wireframe and then let go and that will take us into the wireframe so that I can see that reference image that we added in in the first part of the tutorial series. So I'm now going to press G to grab and then S to scale and we're going to scale that and just make it fit the reference image. And then I can also press seven on the numpad for top view. I can press G to grab. Let's click with our mouse wheel and constrain it to the Y axis and just rotate that back or not rotate it, but just bring it back. And then I can also press three on the numpad to go to side view and see how that is. Um, I guess I will bring it back a little bit. So I'll press G to grab, click and hold it with my mouse wheel to constrain it to the Y axis and bring that back. All right, I'll hold down the Z button, go back to solid view and let go. We'll see how that's looking. Now I wanna smooth it out because you can see it's very blocky. So to smooth it out, let's click on add modifier and under generate, we're gonna go right down here almost to the bottom and we're gonna add the subdivision surface modifier and that is going to smooth it out. Now on the viewport and render, I wanna turn these both up to two and then I can tab to go back into object mode and then using the object context menu, I'm going to shade this smooth. So now I can tab back into edit mode. Let's press one on the numpad for front view. I'm going to hold down the Z button and move over to wireframe and see how that is because we added the subsurf and so when you add the subsurf, it usually gets a slightly smaller because you can see there is our mesh but then there is it after the subsurface has been added. Um, that's looking okay but I think I think I will scale it up a little bit. And then also back in solid view, I want to bring these together a little bit so that they're very close and they're just touching slightly. So something like that's pretty good. You can scale that up a little bit, um, just like that. That is looking pretty good. All right, so let's press Control S again to save. And now let's create the beak. So I'm going to again press Shift C and Shift C is going to center the 3D cursor. And I'm gonna press Shift A. And to make the beak, I'm gonna add a cube. So now that we've added the cube, let's tab into edit mode and I'm gonna scale it down on the Z axis. 
So we'll scale that down. And then I actually want to tab to go back into object mode. And I'll press G to grab and let's bring it up on the Z axis. And then I can press G to grab. And let's click and hold with our mouse wheel and let go to constrain it to the Y axis. And then we'll just scale that down a little bit. And we can also bring it down on the Z axis. So G to grab Z to bring it down on the Z axis just like that. All right, so I'm gonna tap into edit mode and I want to delete this side so that we can add a mirror modifier and then we only have to model one side. So to cut this in half, I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut. We're going to left click and then right click to center it into the center there. And then I'm, I want to delete this side. So what I can do is actually just click right over here on the face select and then I can just select this face. I'm now going to press X to delete, but if we just delete the faces, it's only going to delete that face. So I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. I want to delete the vertices as well. So I can press X to delete and I'm going to delete the vertices. That way it deletes those vertices. And so now those edges are deleted as well. And so it's just brought back to the center. So now we can click on add modifier and I'm going to go right down here and add a mirror modifier. And then also something that's really important is to turn on the clipping button. So click on the clipping. And that way, when I press G to grab, you can see that the clipping is going to merge those together. All right, so I'm going to press seven on the numpad to go to top view. I'm going to hold down the Z button, and move over to go into wireframe so that we can preview that in the background. And then I'll press A to deselect everything and then also press one on the top of your keyboard to go to the vertex select. I'm now going to press B for the box select and I'm going to click and drag and add a box around there. And then I can press G to grab. We'll bring that out on the Z axis. Actually, we'll bring that out on the Y axis. So we're going to bring those front vertices over to the very starting of the beak. Let's now press A to deselect everything. I'm gonna press B for the box select, and I'm just gonna box select those vertices. And then I can press G to grab, and we're gonna bring that out on the X axis and bring it over like that. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's press three on the numpad to go to side view. We need to play around with the shape, so I'll press A to deselect everything, and then press B for the box select. Click and drag to add a box there, and then I can press G to grab. Let's bring this down on the Z axis like that. Then I'll press A to deselect everything and B for the box select and I'm going to select these vertices and I can press G to grab and let's bring them back into the head a little bit like that. And then I want to add a loop cut right in here so that we can make that little smile on the side of the beak. So I'm going to press Control R to add a loop cut and then I can left click. I can bring it right over here and then right click. So I can now deselect everything with A and then I want to bring the top up. So I'm going to press B for the box select click and drag and just add a box right there. And that's just gonna select the top vertices. So I can press G to grab, let's bring this up on the Z axis like that. Press A to deselect everything and press B for the box select. I'm just gonna box select those vertices and then I can press G and Z and we'll bring that up as well. And then A to deselect everything. Again, I'll press B for the box select. We're gonna select those vertices and I'll bring them up. So G to grab, let's bring these up on the Z axis and I want to align that with the smile there on the beak. So now what I need to do is bring this part down. So I'll press A to deselect everything. B for the box select, just box select that. And then I can press G to grab. We'll bring it down the Z axis and bring it way down. And then I need to add some loop cuts in here. So I'm gonna add two loop cuts. So I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut. We'll click to add that loop cut, bring it down and then click to place that. And then also Control R and then click to add the loop cut and place it about there. So I can now press A to deselect everything. I'll press B for the box select and we're just gonna box select the top of those uh, new loop cuts. And then I can press G to grab and let's bring these up on the Z axis kind of like that. All right, that is looking much better. Let's press seven on the numpad to go back to top view and you can see now that shape is wrong because that beak is very like flat. It kind of looks like a low poly penguin. So I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go back to wireframe and press seven on the numpad to go to top view. So I can now press B for the box select. I'm just gonna box select these right here. I can press G to grab. Let's click with our mouse wheel, bring that in on the Y axis. And then I just wanna deselect those vertices. So I'm gonna press B for the box select. But this time I'm gonna click and drag with my middle mouse mouse wheel and then let go and that'll deselect instead of select. So I can press G to grab, click with my mouse wheel, make that smaller, click to place that. And then I'll press B again for the box select, click and drag with my mouse wheel, let go. And then I can press G to grab and then bring it in. And this one I can also press G to grab and I'm gonna bring that back a little bit so that that beak is much more sharp. 
All right, let's go back to solid view, see how that's looking. That is looking pretty good. Now we need to smooth this out. So again, I'm gonna click on add modifier and let's go right down here under generate and we're gonna add the subdivision surface modifier. All right, that's looking pretty cool. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take this loop cut right here and I wanna bring it down because it's still pretty far up. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and then just select this ring of vertices. I'm now going to press one on the numpad to go to side view and then I wanna see the reference image. So I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go to wireframe so I can see that. And then I'm going to double tap the G key. That is going to activate the edge slide and I can now just slide this down just kind of to about there, just like that. So that's going to bring that down. And then also I wanna sharpen up the bottom of the beak. So I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut. Let's click to add a loop cut there, bring it down a little bit. And then I wanna deselect this because it's pretty close. So I'm going to press B for the box select and then click with my middle mouse wheel and just deselect that. And then I can double tap the G key. That'll activate the edge slide. We'll bring the whole thing down a little bit. And then I'm gonna press B for the box select and just box select this, but I'm gonna hold down my middle mouse wheel and then let go just to deselect that. So we now just have these right here. You can see these have a wider gap. So I can now double tap the G key and just kind of bring those down pretty close. I don't want them to be overlapping, but I just want them to be pretty close. All right, like that. So I can tap back into object mode. That's looking pretty cool. And then in object mode, using the object context menu, I'm going to shade that smooth. Let's tap back into edit mode now. And I want to sharpen this up right here because you can see that is like really smooth. And also I want to turn up the subsurf because if you zoom in there, you can see that's kind of sharp right there. So on the subdivision surface modifier, I'm going to make sure the viewport and render is both set to two. All right, so tap back into edit mode and I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut. Let's click and then we're going to bring the loop cut up kind of like that and then just click and place it about there. So now you can see that beak is much more sharp. Now right here I want to just bring that out a little bit so it's just kind of popping out and it's a bit more round. So I'm going to hold down the Z button, go to wireframe and let go and then I'm going to kind of move my view about here and I'm going to press B for the box select and I'm going to click with my mouse wheel drag over and let go just to deselect those vertices. And then also I'm going to press B for the box select, click with my middle mouse wheel and let go. And that way we just have those top vertices selected. So then if I press Z, go back into solid and let go, uh, I can press one on the numpad that's gonna go to front view and I can press G to grab and I just wanna bring it up kind of like that. That's really all I wanna do just so that's a little bit more straight there or it's not quite as sharp. All right, that's pretty good. So we now have that little beak for the penguin. Let's press Control S again to save. And now we're gonna do the bottom of the beak. So it's pretty much the same exact thing, but it's gonna be a little bit of a different shape. So I'm gonna press Shift C and that is going to center the 3D cursor. Let's press Shift A and I'm gonna go right here and add a cube. Let's press G to grab. Let's bring it up on the Z axis and then I can scale it down. And then I'll press G to grab and we're gonna bring it over on the Y axis just to about there where the beak is. So I'm gonna press Tab to go into edit mode and I wanna delete half of it again. So I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut. Let's left click and then right click. And then what I can do is click back over here on the face select and we just want to select this face. And then I'm gonna press X to delete. And again, we want to delete the vertices. So it's not just gonna delete the face, but it's also gonna delete the vertices around the face. So we can now click on add modifier and we're gonna add the mirror modifier and then make sure the X is turned on so it mirrors it over on the X axis. So this way, back and forth. And then I also wanna turn on the clipping so that it merges the center together. So now what I wanna do is just make sure you're in the face select and then select this face and I can press seven on the numpad for top view and then I'll hold down the Z button, move over to wireframe. So we can't really see the bottom beak because the top beak is on top of it, but I'll press G to grab, click and hold my mouse wheel to constrain it to the Y axis, just bring that over. And then I can press three on the numpad to go to side view and we can see that bottom beak there. So I want to click right here to go to the vertex select and then press A to deselect everything. I'll press B for the box select. I'm just gonna box select that there. I can press G to grab and let's bring it up on the Z axis, just like that. And then if you need to, you can box select these right here and you can bring them back and forth just to fit that shape. Let's press A to deselect everything and I wanna add a loop cut right here. So I'll press Control R. We're gonna add a loop cut right there. So just drag the loop cut down and then I'll press A to deselect everything. I'll press B for the box select and I'm just gonna box select all of these vertices right here and I wanna flatten them. So to flatten them, to flatten this face right here, I'm gonna press S to scale and then I wanna scale it on the Z axis so it's going up and down. Now I could just kinda of drag with my mouse to make it more flat but it's easier just to type in zero and then enter and that is going to flatten that face. You can see now it's flat. So if I go three on the numpad for side view, I can press 
press G to grab and bring that up on the Z axis. And then I'm going to press B for the box select, just select these vertices, and I can press G and Z and we'll bring that up. And then we'll deselect everything with A. Again, I'm going to press B for the box select. I just want to box select the back of the beak and I'll press G to grab click with your mouse wheel and we just want to bring that back so that it's much longer. All right, so I now want to add some loop cuts in here. I'm just going to add two loop cuts. So I'll press control R. Let's add one kind of up there and then I'll press control R again and we'll just add another one right there. So I can now press A to deselect everything. I'll press B for the box select. I'm just going to select those vertices and then I can press G to grab. Let's bring these down on the Z axis and just align that to the reference image. Bring that one up a little bit. All right, that's pretty good, but you can see that it's very boxy. It's not the shape that we want. So what I'm gonna do is just select this vertex and then shift select this vertex. I can press seven on the numpad for top view. I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go over to wireframe and let go. So just make sure you're on the top view and I can press G to grab. And we're just gonna shape it so it's a little bit smaller than the top beak. I'll press A to deselect everything using the box select. I'm just gonna box select that front piece right there. I'll press G to grab and let's bring it a little bit more out. Press A to deselect that. And then let's zoom out a little bit and using the box select, I'm just gonna box select all of these vertices. I can now press G to grab, click with your mouse wheel and just make it a little bit longer. So what I'm doing is I'm basically aligning this part of the beak to this part of the beak because this is the bottom beak. So it's gonna be a little bit smaller. So I'm now gonna press B for the box select and I'm gonna click with my mouse wheel, just make a box around there to deselect that. And then again, I can press G to grab, click with your mouse wheel, just kind of bring that over and then B for the box select, and then click with your mouse wheel, deselect that, and then again I'll press G to grab, click with your mouse wheel, and let go to constrain it to the Y axis, and just bring that out. All right, there we go, so back in solid view, that is looking much better. So then back in object mode, I want to shade it smooth, so using the object context menu, I'll shade it smooth, and then we need to add a subsurf because it's very low poly, so let's click on add modifier, and under generate, we're gonna add the subdivision surface, and the shortcut key is control two, or control one, control one, is if you just want to add the viewport with one levels or control two if you want to add it with two levels. So I'm going to set the levels viewport and render to two. So I'll tap back into edit mode and then I want to do a similar thing like I did with the top one. I just want to take this one and I want to bring it up a little bit. So I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select that ring of vertices and I can press one on the numpad for front view. I can hold down the Z button, go over to wireframe and let go. And then I want to deselect this piece here. So I'll press B for the box select and then click with my middle mouse wheel and let go just to deselect that. And then I can press G to grab and we're just gonna bring that whole thing up a little bit. Let's see how that's looking in solid view. That's looking pretty good, just kind of bring that up. And then if you wanted to, you could double tap the A key to select everything and just scale the whole thing up a little bit and maybe bring it down on the Z axis a little bit if you need to. That's looking pretty good. And then I also wanna add a loop cut right in here because if you navigate inside the penguin, you can see that's very round and I wanna make it a bit more sharp like this is. So I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut click here and bring that pretty close and then place that there. And actually I'm gonna tab into object mode and select the top beak now. We'll tab into edit mode and then I'm gonna add a loop cut here as well. So I'll press control R, click to add a loop cut and drag that over and that's gonna sharpen the back of the beak there. You can't really see it, but um, it will make the front look a bit more flat and just going back into the head. And then just one other thing I thought of, I do want to tab into edit mode and you can see this right here is kind of rounding and I don't want it to round like that. So in edit mode, I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut, just kind of drag the loop cut up a bit like that. Um, just bring it up like that so it'll sharpen up the top of the beak. All right, that's pretty good. Um, now, when the penguin opens his mouth, we are going to see inside the beak. So I'm going to select the top beak and I'll press H to hide that. And then we're going to be modeling like a tongue in here. So I'm going to select this and we will tap into edit mode. And I want to bring it down just a little bit so we have a little bit more room for the tongue. So I'm going to select this vertex, hold down the shift key, select these vertices, and then I can also navigate inside the penguin and let's hold down the shift key and select those vertices. So I can press G to grab and let's bring these down on the Z axis just to make that so it's a little bit more round like that. All right, back in object mode, I can press Control S again to save and let's do the tongue. So again, I'll press Shift C and that's going to send out the 3D cursor and then I can press Shift A. Let's go down here and add a cube. I can press G to grab. Let's bring it up on the Z axis and then I can bring it over on the Y axis. And then I'll press S to scale and we're going to scale that down and I can press period on the numpad and that's going to zoom over to the object. I'll tab into edit mode and then I want to scale this down. So I'll press S to scale. We'll scale it on the Z axis and then I can also scale this up. So I'll scale it up a little bit and then I'll scale it up on the Y axis like that. 
And then I can tap back into object mode and let's press G to grab. We'll bring it back on the Y axis and then I can bring it down on the Z axis like that. Let's tap back into edit mode now and I wanna delete half of it so we can add a mirror modifier. So I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut. We can left click and right click to bring that back right there into the center. And then again, let's click right here or you can also press three on the numpad and that's gonna to go to the face select. I'm just gonna select this face here and then we can press X to delete. And again, we want to delete the vertices so it deletes half of it. So we can now click on add modifier and we're gonna go right down here and add a mirror modifier. And then let's tap back into object mode and I want to press control two and that is the shortcut key to add a subdivision surface. And then also I do wanna turn the clipping here on the mirror so that it uh, merges those together. All right, so let's tap back into edit mode and I'll select everything with A and I'll press S to scale. We can scale that out. I can also rotate it. So I'm gonna press R to rotate. We can rotate it on the X axis and then I can press G to grab and bring that out and I can also scale it up a bit. Now you can see that it's very sharp right here and so I wanna add a loop cut in here kind of along the side. So I'm gonna press Control R, I'm gonna left click and then right click and you can see now that is much more round and it looks much more like a tongue. And then I'm gonna go into object mode and then using the object context menu, I can shade that smooth. I can also bring it down on the Z axis a little bit more just like that. And then I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I wanna add some loop cuts in here so I can kind of rotate the tongue up a little bit. So I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut and I'm going to click and add a loop cut there, kind of bring it over there, and then also press Control R to add a loop cut again. Let's bring another loop cut right there. All right, so I'm now going to go right here to the vertex select, and then I wanna hold down the Shift and Alt key and select this loop of vertices, so we have both of those selected. So I can press G and Z, and we're gonna bring those up like that, and I can tap back into object mode. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I do wanna add just a little crease in the tongue, so I'm gonna tab into edit mode, and then I can press Control R to add a loop cut. I'm just gonna click and drag and add a loop cut right there, and just kinda of bring it in. And then what we can do is we can bring those vertices down and it'll make it look kind of like there is a little indent there in the tongue. So I'm gonna select this vertex, hold down the shift key, select this vertex. We'll navigate inside here and then shift and select that vertex. So I can press G to grab and let's bring these down on the Z axis. And you can see when I'm bringing it down, it's adding in that little sharp point right there that kind of looks like a tongue. Now this tongue is very long, so I wanna fix the shape of it. So I'm gonna press seven for top view and I can tap into edit mode. So I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go over to wireframe and let go. Go, and then I can press A to deselect everything and I'll press B for the box select and I'm just gonna drag a box around there. Then I can press G to grab and we're gonna bring that back a little bit and then I'll press B for the box select and select everything. Then I can press G to grab and I can click and hold with my mouse wheel and just kind of bring that tongue back so it's not quite that sharp and not that far out. All right, go back into object mode and that is looking really good. So I'll press Control S to save and then I'm going to press Alt H and Alt H is going to unhide that object that we uh, hid there. I just want to add one more object now and that is going to be the eyebrows. So I'm going to press shift C to center the 3D cursor. I can press shift A and let's go right here and add another cube. I'll press G to grab. Let's bring this up on the Z axis and then I can scale it way down. And then I can also press G to grab and let's bring this out on the Y axis. So I'll tab into edit mode and I can scale it down even more. And then I can press G to grab and let's bring this out on the X axis. Let's scale it down a little bit smaller, and then I can scale this. So press S to scale. We're going to scale this on the X axis, and I'll just make that a bit longer and maybe bring it a little bit more over the eye. All right, I'm gonna tab back into object mode and we're gonna add some modifiers. So I'm gonna click on add modifier, and the first modifier that I wanna add is the bevel modifier to give it a little bit of a bevel. So we'll add the bevel modifier, and then I want to turn these segments up. So I'm gonna click right here to turn the segments up, and I'm just gonna give it three segments. So you can now see that that is nice and smooth and it looks round and then using the object context menu, I'll shade that smooth. And then also you can see there's like a little bit of a sharp point right there, and that is because I need to turn this amount down. So what I'm gonna do is hold down the shift key and then drag, and you can see as I turn the amount down, the bevel isn't gonna be as big. So I just wanna make the bevel about that big so that you can't see that sharpness in the center there, but it's making it look nice and round. All right, and then I'm going to tab into edit mode and I do wanna make the eyebrows kind of rounded. So I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut. And then before I click to add that, I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel up and then I can left click and right click just to place that there. Then I can press G to grab. Let's bring that up on the Z axis like that. 
click to place that, and then I can tab back into object mode. So that's looking really good, although I do want to press Control-1, and Control-1 is going to add a subdivision surface, and I want to click on the render and just change that down to 1. So it's just going to add a little bit of a subsurf. And then I also want to add a mirror modifier, so it mirrors it over to the other side. So we're going to add another modifier. So click on Add Modifier. We're going to go right down here and add a mirror right down here under Generate. The mirror is right there. We're just going to add the mirror modifier, and we're going to mirror it over on the x-axis. And then I want to press G to grab. Let's bring this back on the y-axis. And then I can also tab into edit mode, and I'm going to double tap the A key to select everything. And I can just kind of rotate that over a little bit so it kind of fits the head more. Just kind of rotate that up and kind of stick it pretty close to the head. Um, but it can be floating because this is kind of a like a stylized cartoony penguin. So I think it actually is kind of cool to have the eyebrows floating a little bit. And then also one thing that I want to do is just scale them up a little bit. We can press one on the numpad to go to the front view. And then if I hold down the Z button, I can go to wireframe and just kind of rotate this and make it pretty close to the same shape as the reference there. All right, tab back into object mode. We'll press control S again to save. And this is going to wrap it up for part two of the tutorial series. So the modeling is finished. So in part three, we are going to be setting up some lighting and then we're going to do some materials and we're also going to be doing a little bit of texture painting to paint the little white belly on the penguin. So I will have part three right up there on the end screen when it's released and also the link in the video description. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've been enjoying this so far and I will see you in part three.